Coming on to this evening, we're very privileged to have with us um, Nargis Fazad from SOAS, School of Oriental and African Studies, and Alan Williams from the University um, of Manchester, who are going to tell us something about Yalda and recite um, poetry that's appropriate for the uh, occasion. Neither of them needs much uh, introduction um, to this audience. Nargis is well known for the wonderful work she's done with um, Persian Online, and um, Alan has won international acclaim for his um, work on Rumi. Um, and after they've spoken, uh, you're all invited to a reception um, where there'll be some uh, snacks uh, fitting for a Yalda celebration. Um, before that, I rashly, rashly, um, are the acoustics all right? It sounds to me as if it's sort of echoing backwards and forwards, but perhaps it's not, okay. Um, I rashly undertaken to say a few words about the significance of um, Yalda. Uh, I say rashly because um, I'm an archeologist and an ancient historian myself and not an expert in ancient Iranian um, religion or Zoroastrianism. Uh, or Persian literature, so please forgive me um, if what I say is um, very general and not particularly scholarly. Well, in many different parts of the world and in many different religions, um, there are four great festivals um, during the year, coinciding with the spring equinox around 21st of March, when the days and nights are of equal length, the summer solstice, uh, Midsummer's Day around the 21st June, the longest day of the year, the autumn equinox around 21st of uh, September, and the winter solstice, the shortest day of the year, around 21st December. And in most Western countries, these four ancient festivals are commemorated through uh, Easter, Midsummer's Day, the Harvest Festival, and Christmas. Um, well, turning to Iran, the origins of nearly uh, all um, Iranian national festivals are to be found in the pre-Islamic Zoroastrian uh, era. And I know there are um, more than four major religious uh, festivals in Zoroastrianism, uh, I think six or seven, but I just want now to talk about, um, about uh, those four um, of them. The four festivals um, that mirror those that I've just um, referred to uh, and, incur, and occur at the changing of the seasons, the beginning of spring, uh, midsummer, the beginning of autumn and midwinter. So let's start with Nowruz, the great Iranian festival, uh, the greatest Iranian festival of the year, well known to all of you. It's been celebrated since uh, ancient times, and there are many people that believe that the carved stone reliefs on the side of the Pallax of Xerxes at Persepolis actually show 24 delegations from different parts of the Persian Empire bringing presents and tributes to the great king at the time of Nowruz. Uh, nowadays, um, the Iran Heritage Foundation celebrates Nowruz um, with a magnificent um, gala dinner, and this gives me an opportunity to say that the next Nowruz gala dinner will be at the Grosvenor House Hotel uh, on 19th March, and I hope that many of you um, will be there. Well, the Iranian Midsummer Festival is known as Tiragan, um, celebrated on the 13th tier, that's the 3rd, 4th, or 5th um, July. It's also known as the Ancient Iranian Rain Festival uh, and is celebrated by splashing water, dancing, reciting poetry, and serving traditional foods. And of course, reciting poetry is a recurrent theme in the celebration of Iranian festivals. Well, the autumn festival, um, Mehragan, was very important for ancient Iranians, and according to the great 11th century scholar Biruni, it was regarded by some people as even more important um, than Nowruz. But nowadays, it's not celebrated very much uh, in uh, Iran. Um, well, this brings us on to Yalda, the midwinter festival celebrated on the eve of the shortest day of the year, generally the 20th of December or the 21st of December. Um, it's known in person as uh, Shabe Yalda, or uh, sometimes um, Shabe Chele, 
uh, reflecting the fact that there are 40 days um, of winter um, to come. And as you all know, 40 uh, is a symbolic uh, figure uh, in a number of um, different cultures. So in the Christian religion, the period of fasting before Easter, um, Lent, is 40 days long. Uh, and in um, Islam, um, Arba'in, commemorating the martyrdom of Hussein, is the 40th day after Ashura. And as a matter of fact, uh, today uh, is actually um, Arba'in. Well, um, what is actually celebrated at Yaldar is the victory of light over darkness. From now on, the days get longer. And in other words, this is the triumph of Ahura Mazda um, over uh, Ahriman. And during this longest night of the year, the forces of um, Ahriman, the evil spirit, are at their most potent, and people must be vigilant, and it's for this reason that they gather together uh, in family groups to stay awake and pass the night in feasting and reciting poetry. Well, Yaldar is actually a Syriac word, uh, meaning birth, and the festival also marks uh, the birthday of Mithra, uh, in the Zoroastrian religion, one of the helper gods who assists um, Ahura Mazda in his struggle with um, Ahriman. Uh, and Mithra, of course, also became an important god in the Roman religion, and there are a number of Mithraeums, um, temples dedicated to Mithra around the world, uh, including one here in the city of London. Um, well, how is Yalda celebrated? I think probably Nagas is going to tell us something about that in a minute. But uh, traditionally, um, I'm sure many of you know much more about this than I do, but traditionally, I think Iranians eat fruit um, and nuts that have been stored um, throughout the autumn, uh, fruits like uh, melons, pomegranates, apples, and oranges. Um, they also eat a mixture of nuts and dried fruits known as ajili moshkel kosha, and we might have some of that mixture uh, in the reception. I hope we do. We're supposed to. Let, let's find out if we actually do or not. And if you would like to know more about uh, what should be in this ajil, I recommend to you the very wonderful book by um, Maryam Khosro Shahi, which um, uh, describes that it's a mixture of seven nuts and dried fruits and tells you um, what they are. It's a very interesting book, but it doesn't actually mention um, Yalda. Well, we've touched on connections between um, Yalda and Christmas. It's just one other area, I think, where Iranian influence um, can be seen, uh, and that is um, in the Christian tradition of the arrival of the three wise men coming from the East to visit the in infant uh, Jesus and uh, bearing with them gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Uh, now, this incident is described in the book of uh, Gospel of Matthew, and the term Magi does actually refer to Zoroastrian priests. So, if the writer of that Gospel is using the term Magus um, in the correct way, we've got evidence for three uh, Iranian priests being brought into the biblical uh, narrative. But whatever the truth of um, that particular story, uh, there's most definitely uh, a lot of um, Zoroastrian influence on early Christianity. But I have to say that's not a subject that I can go into now, and not even um, a subject that I'm really qualified to talk about. So now I'm going to hand you over um, to the experts, and I hope you'll all have a very enjoyable evening. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, John. It's always like being home here. It's certainly for me and Alan, both of us have other hats as members of the academic committee, so it really does feel like we are just um, feasting at our own party. Are we going to do a double act? Are we going to double act? I'm not, I will defer to Alan on all the authentic traditions of Yalda. I can, only, <laughs> I can only talk about um, in Iran. Somebody, a very dear friend, sent me a... Um, an email saying that, you know, t telling us something about our own characteristics. And I was just thinking when John was talking that in this it, it said that, um, of course, you know, if we think we are the, from the Parks, if you are the Parthian descendant, that's why any excuse to always have a good party. So I think uh, when we do feast and celebrate, there has to be poetry and there has to be celebration of this wonderful 
art of the word with music and lots of food and um, all sorts of beverages, alcoholic or otherwise. We'll leave it to your taste. We, um, I am not going to talk much about Yalda. You can certainly find out a lot more about it. But one of the things that is traditional at Yalda, perhaps if you were to decide how you were going to spend the longest night of the year, perhaps you know, you'll have all sorts of ideas. And I'm sure poetry will complement whatever you want to do. And there is no shortage of material to select from. I had originally, when John very kindly um, asked me to do this tonight, had thought of something jolly, something you know, perhaps mischievous even. Um, but then in the current climate, I just thought, I don't really feel like reading a lot of jovial verses, even if they are from 12th century or 13th century or contemporary. And I thought maybe I will look at this vast region and just pluck a flower or two from um, obviously the greater Khorasan, but the home of most of our wonderful poets, both in the current uh, Ustan Khorasan in Iran and obviously in the greater regions of it in Central Asia, Tajikistan and Afghanistan. But I thought the height of the um, period of poetry where that really appeals to all us Persian speakers, particularly in Iran, is the poetry of Hafiz. And we always have to look for an oracle. And perhaps we will fast forward to the Sabke Iraqi, to the Iraqi, Iraq Ajam period, uh, style of Ghazal, the love odes, and maybe start uh, with a Ghazal of Hafiz for you. Now, the good news is it's short. The slightly bad news is I just realized I left a page of my translation at my desk in Russell Square at Sars, so I've scribbled quickly. For those lovely guests who are not Farsi speakers, Persian speakers, please don't judge the original by my translations. This is but a mere taster. The original is more, far more beautiful. Hafiz, 15th century poet, whose language can be both a celebration of profane, earthly, erotic love, and of course, the divine love. You can choose as you wish. I selected this poem, and it really, I opened it last night, my uh, well-thumbed Divana Hafiz, one of many, and this poem came up. And I realized that it's, it was something a, a bit familiar to it, and it's very similar to a ghazal of his contemporary, Khaju. And if I just read the beginning of Khaju, manzilar yor qarinas, che duzakh, che behesht, sujdegar gar beniyazast, che masjid, che kenesht, jay asayesh mushtaq, che hamun o che kuh, rahzan khater ushaq, che ziba o che zisht. And you will see that half of this ghazal, which certainly perfects the theme that Khaju started is um, really a response, a nod and a bow to Khaju's ideas. <clears throat> and as always, there is a dialogue between the hypocrites um, and those, or, or a chastisement of the hypocrites by the salt of the earth, by the rough diamonds. Eiberendon مکنه ای زاهد پاکیز سرشت که گناه دیگران بر تو نخواهند نوشت من اگر نیکم و گربد تو برو خود را باش هر کسی آن درود آقبت کار که کشت همه کس طالب یارند چه حشیار و چه مست همه جا خانه عشق است چه مسجد چه کنشت سر تسلیم من و خشت در میکده ها مدعی گر نکند فهم سخن گو سر و خشت ناامیدم مکن از سابقه لطف ازل تو پس پرده چه دانی که که خوب است و که زشت؟ 
نه من از پرده تقوا هدر افتادم و بس نه من از پرده تقوا هدر افتادم و بس پدرم نیز بهشت ابد از دست بهشت حافظا روز عجل گر به کفاری جامی یک سر از سوی خرابات برندت به بهشت And my rough translation, if I can subject you to that, for those who are not here. Do not censor the rogues, O oh pure-natured ascetic. The sins of others will not be recorded against yours. Whether I am good, whether I am bad, you go and worry about yourself. In the end, each will harvest what he has sown. All people, whether sober, whether drunk, seek the beloved friend. Everywhere is the house of love, whether the mosque or the synagogue. My head bowed in submission, resting on the tavern's door. If the carper doesn't get the meaning behind this, tell him, beat his head against the wall. Now the missing lines. Do not take away my trust in the benevolence of the Creator. How would you know what's concealed behind a veil, whether it's good or it is bad? Not only I have tumbled from the perch of piety, my father too let paradise slip through his hands. Oh, Hafiz, if on the day of judgment you were to hold a cup of wine, they will take you straight from the tavern right on to the paradise. I apologize, that was not as good as what I had uh, towards the end. Now, I want to take you very briefly to Kabul, where Persian poetry, Persian language, is celebrated and absolutely adored. It would be dishonest to say that all Afghanis um, revere Persian. Of course not, that Pashtus perhaps um, have different priorities, but certainly Persian poetry is thriving. And the uh, preoccupations of a modern poet there, Reza Muhammadi, Siyasat rudkhane bozorgist ke qariyehay ma ra از هم جدا می کند ای سربازان توفنگ هایتان را جمع کنید بیسیم هایتان را ببندید دستبند و هشدار و کمین چه بکار است ما از شما نیستیم تنها می خواهیم از رودخانه رد شویم توپمان آن طرف افتاده است The Football by the contemporary poet Reza Mohammadi. Politics is a vast river that divides our villages. Oh, soldiers, put down your guns and still your radios. There is no need for handcuffs, for warnings, for an ambush. We are not one of you. We just want to get across and get our ball back. And then I go right up to the home of the revival of Persian language, the new Persian of um, the 9th century, 10th century onwards, which was very much through poetry. And I want to, re uh, I beg yes, uh, uh, before going right to Central Asia, actually perhaps in the order, would be to pause in our own Khorasan, in Mashhad, and to read you a, a poem entitled Zemistan, The Winter, which is by Mehdi Akhavan Salis, I think my most favorite um, modern poet. Akhavan Salis was born in Mashhad in 1926 and very sadly passed away in 1990. Uh, and um, his life um, traverses a very political period in Iran, both the Um, 
shadow of the Second World War on Iran, the coup of 1953, the political meltdown, and then all, all the way through the beginnings of the Islamic Revolution. So this is a poem about wi winter, um, and I won't explain it. I'm sure you know it by heart, and then I'll read the translation. <clears throat> سلامت را نمی خواهند پاسخ گفت سرها در گریبان است کسی سر بر نیارد کرد پاسخ گفتن و دیدار یاران را نگه جز پیش پا را دید نتواند که ره تاریک و لغزان است وگر دست محبت سوی کسیازی به اکراه آورد دست از بغل بیرون که سرما سخت سوزان است نفس که از گرمگاه سینه می آید برون ابری شود تاریک چو دیوار ایستد در پیش چشمانت نفس کین است پس دیگر چه داری چشم ز چشم دوستان دور یا نزدیک مسیح های جوان مسیح های جوان مرد من ای ترسای پیر پیر هن چرکین هوا بس ناجوان مردان سرد است آی دمت گرم و سرت خوش باد سلامم را تو پاسخ گوی در را بکشای منم من میهمان هر شبت لولی وش مقموم منم من سنگ تیپا خورده رنجور منم دشنام پست آفرینش نقمه ناجور نه از رومم نه از زنگم همان بیرنگ بیرنگم بیا بکشای در بکشای دلتنگم حریفا میزبان حریفا میزبانا میهمان سال و ماهت پشت در چون موج میلرزد تگرگی نیست مرگی نیست صدایی گرشنیدی صحبت سرما و دندان است من امشب آمدستم وام بگذارم حسابت را کنار جام بگذارم چه میگویی که بیگه شد سحر شد بام داد آمد فریبت میدهد بر آسمان این سرخی بعد از سهرگه نیست حریفا گوش سرما برده است این یادگار سیلی سرد زمستان است و قندیل سپهر تنگ میدان مرده یا زنده به تابوت ستبر ظلمت نهتوی مرگ اندود پنهان است حریفا رو چراغ باده را بفروز شب با روز یکسان است سلامت را نمیخواهند پاسخ گفت هوا دلگیر درها بست سرها در گریبان دستها پنهان نفسها ابر دلها خسته و غمگین درختان اسکلتهای بلوراجین زمین دل مرده سقف آسمان کوتاه قبار آلوده مهر و ماه زمستان است So, do I have time to do my English as well? I can do, not do the other one. Okay. <clears throat> They don't want to return your greetings. Chins tucked into the collars. And no one lifts their eyes or bothers a response. Eyes fixed firmly on the road. And then friends' eyes do not meet yours. The road is slippery and the light dim. And if you stretch out a hand of, hand of friendship towards someone with reluctance, will they remove their hands from the warmth of their pockets? For the cold is blisteringly cruel. 
from the warmth of the breast, breath rises in visible puffs, shaping a wall before your eyes. If breath can be so menacing, then what to expect from the glances of friends, close or distant? Oh, my kindly messiah, my old caring amigo, clad in your grubby stained shirt, long may you live and happy may you thrive. Won't you return my salutations and open the door? It's me, your forlorn, nightly drifting guest. It's me, that wretched clod of clay, trodden and kicked out of the way. It's me, the creation's sad joke, fallen flat, the wrong note, ill-fitted in a tune. Neither ebony nor ivory, I am that colourless, sallow soul. Please open the door, I am desolate and crushed. Oh, comrade, my gracious host, it's your long-time guests shivering behind the door. There have been no deaths nor a hailstorm. If there is a noise you hear, it's only the teeth chattering with the cold. I have turned up tonight to repay my debt, to leave beside the glass what I owe you. What do you mean it is late? It's nearly dawn, the sun has risen, the sky is playing tricks on you. This red is not the glow of morn. Comrade, the cold has sliced the lobe. The bites are keepsakes of frost. And the frosted pendant, festooned on the sky, dead or alive, is wrapped in ten folds of death's felt, tucked hidden in the thick coffin of darkness. Oh, comrade, hurry and light the lantern of wine. The night just mimics the day. Salomatro, Nemi Hand, Pasochdad. They do not want to return your greetings. The air fetid and dark, doors slammed shut, chins tucked in colours, hands hidden away, breath a lingering fog, hearts worn out and sad, trees crystallised, deciduous bones, the earth lifeless, the sky low, the moon and the sun blared in a haze. It is winter. <coughs> and do I have a quick one from Farzana of Khujand? Or would you rather have stop? Please. Shall I do Farzana? Okay. This lady, who is my absolute um, uh, heroine and my uh, wonderful soulmate, the national poet of uh, Tajikistan, <coughs> Farzan Khojandi. So we now go to Khojan, very close on the edges of the Fergana Valley, very near the Sir Daryo, the wonderful river. And this poem, for a light, more lighter mood, is called Sibedozdi. And in it, she refers to Bahman Yar, who is a thriller writer and a Tajik um, uh, novelist. Dive day ma, and talking about month of day, which is um, when just after Yaldo, the uh, winter solstice heralds the start of Capricorn, I think it is. Dive day ma, dar agush harisash, shishe ra mi larzanad. Yad man ayad, gulak qisse bahman yar, gul zeshti kenaz bardar ziba is. دیو دی ماه هم به شیشه میزند انگشت و بی پری تمناهایش باز به تنهایی خود برمیگردد. من به راق کنار روزنه ها چسب میزنم. من در این بی صدایی مطلق پیش آینه نفس می شکنم. آه فردا دوستی من و آینه ختم خواهد شد نه من به آینه مجاز هیچگه دوست نبودم گربه ساده همسایه در لب بام آرزوی بزرگ ناشدنی می ورزد. از آشخانه ما گوشت رو بودن من در عمرم باری در پنج سالگی 
از پس پنجره همسایه سیب رو بودم یک شکر سیب اطلسی که مادرش محتاب پدرش خورشید است گاه دزدی به دست افتادم بیرون آمد زخانه نو عروس همسایه گفت نزدیک بیا دست هایم لرزید دلم از شاخه سینه ام افتاد سیب لبخندی زد من گناهکار بزرگی بودم گناه من گرانتر از گناه آدم و هوا بود نو عروس قافل به رخم بوسه زد و گفت این دست رومال اطلسی را به تو می بخشم من چه خوشبخت گناهکاری بودم من فقط یک بار دزدی کردم لیک روزی ناشناسی گفت سیب من در قفس سینه چراغک میزد تو چرا دزدیدی من چه خوشبخت گناهکاری بودم باز دیما هست و من در آینه پرحوصله پیر خیش می نگرم آب آینه چرا یخ بست؟ ای آفتاب بیا و طبیب آینه شد باز شب می آید پشت شیشه درخت اوریانی چون قول قصه بهمنیار منتظر پری محتاب است I've just taken too long. Um, mm, mm, mm. You're exchanging glances, you two. They're right. We're Iranian. We just have our Ajil uh, Mushkil later. Stolen apples, which I've translated this with Josh Apcott, the English poet. Winter rattles the glass in its greedy, greedy hug. I remember the ghosts in the stories of Bahman Yar, ugly things who steal beauty. Capricorn scratches at the windows and then returns to his own loneliness minus the fairy of his desires. I tape up the cracks around the windows into this utter vacuum of silence. I puff my breath at the mirror. Oh, tomorrow my friendship with the mirror will end. But no, I was never friends with these illusory mirrors. The neighbor's cat, naive, perched on the roof's edge, harbors an impossible dream, stealing meat from the stew pot at our house. I stole only once in my life, at five years old, an apple snatched through the neighbor's window, a satin-skinned sugar apple whose mother was moonlight and whose father was the sun. I was caught red-handed, She came from next door, just married, all over her face, and said, come here. My hands trembled, my heart dropped like a windfall. The apple smiled. I was a big sinner. My sin was heavier than Adam and Eve's. Unexpectedly, the new bride next door planted a kiss on my face and said, I'll give you this satin hanky stitched by hand. I was a lucky sinner. I only stole that once, but one day a stranger said to me, my apple used to twinkle in my breast. Why did you steal it? I was a lucky sinner. It's December again, and in the mirror I look at my old patience. Why did the mirror freeze over? Night comes again, behind the windows, the naked tree, like the ghost in the stories of Bahman Yar, Wait for the fairy of the moonlight. I'm going to stand up <laughs> for the cameras. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, Now, I found it very difficult. Good evening, by the way. Um, I'm Alan Williams, and I've come from Manchester to see you this evening. And I've brought with me um, my wife, uh, Ida Forutan, um, for a very specific reason, which is that uh, in thinking about what on earth we could read tonight, um, the one poem I remembered having the word or the, a reference to Yalda in 
well, actually, it's Cele Kuchek, isn't it? Cele Kuchek, is Paddy R. And uh, by Shomlu. And I know that Ida has known it by heart for many years. And so I asked her, rather than you suffer my appalling rendering of Paddy R, uh, Ida's going to perform it for you, shall we say, or read it for you, perform it. And um, then I am going to make you suffer by inflicting on you one Farangi's translation of one of the most accomplished poems of the 20th century, uh, which is a terrible thing to inflict on you. But if you'd rather not say at the end of Ida's performance, then I'll just sit down and get on with something else. Uh, then the rest of the, what are the, the other, then I'm going to go way, way back in time. Um, and you uh, see, I'm also in another life, I'm also a Zoroastrianist, and I'm going to inflict to read you some very rare example of some Persian Zoroastrian poetry, just a little bit as a taster, because this is where it all comes from. And then I'm going to move forward into what is my daily bread and butter, which is Molana, and I'm going to read you uh, some short extracts uh, from three things I haven't published yet, from books two, three, and four, because uh, I'm working on the whole thing of the, of the Masnevi. So without further ado, um, I'm going to ask Ida to do Paddy R. Thank you. Have you got my voice? Okay. Yeki wood, yeki nabood. زیر گنبد کبود لخت و تنگ غروب ست تا پری نشسته بود زار و زار گریه میکردن پریا مثل ابرای بهار گریه میکردن پریا گیسشون قد کمون رنگ شبق از کمون بلند ترک از شبق مشکی ترک رو به روشون تو افق شهر قلامای اسیر پشتشون سرد و سیا قلعه افسانه پیر از افق جیرینگ جیرینگ صدای زنجیر می اومد از عقب از توی برج ناله شب گیر می اومد پریا گشت نتونه پریا تش نتونه پریا خسته شدیم مرغ پربسته شدیم چیه این های هایتون گریتون وای وایتون پریا هیچی نگفتن زار و زار گریه می کردن پریا مثل ابرای بهار گریه می کردن پریا پریا یه نازنین چه تو نظار میزنین توی این صحرای دور توی این تنگ غروب نمیگین برف میاد نمیگین بارون میاد نمیگین گرگ میاد میخوردتون نمیگین دیبه میاد یه لخ میخوام میکندتون نمیترسین پریا نمیاین به شهر ما شهر ما صداش میاد صدای زنجیراش میاد پریا قد رشیدم ببینین اسب سپیدم ببینین اسب سپید نقر نل یال و دو مشرنگ اصل مرکب سرسرتک من آهوی آهن رگ من گردن ساقشو ببینین باد دماغشو ببینین امشب تو شهر چراغونه خونه دیبا داغونه مردم ده مهمون من با دم و دوم به شهر میاد داریه و دنبک میزنن میرقصن و میرقصونن قنچه خندون میریزن نقل بیابون میریزن های میکشن هوی میکشن شهر جای ما شد عید مردم ماست دیب گله داره دنیا مال ماست دیب گله داره سفیدی پادشاست دیب گله داره سیاهی رو سیاس دیب گله داره پریا دیگه تو که روز شکسته درای قرعه بسته اگه تا زود بلنشین سوار اسب منشین میرسیم به شهر مردم ببینین صداش میاد جینگ و جینگ ریختن زنجیر برده هاش میاد آره زنجیرای گرون حلقه به حلقه لابلا میریزن ز دست و پا پوسیدن پاره میشن دیبا بیچاره میشن سر به جنگل بذارن جنگل و خارزار میبینن سر به صحرا بذارن کویر و نمکزار میبینن عوضش تو شهر ما آخ نمیدونین پریا در برجا وا میشن بردهدارا رسوا میشن علوما آزاد میشن فیرونه ها آباد میشن هرکی که قصه داره غمشو زمین میذاره قالی میشن حسیرا 
آزاد میشن اسیرا اسیرا کینه دارن داستشون رو بر میدارن سیل میشن شر 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 آتیش میشن گر 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 تو قلب شب که بدگله آتیش بازی چه خوشگله آتیش آتیش چه خوبه حالا تنگ غروبه چیزی به شب نمونده به سوز تب نمونده به جستن و با جستن تو حوز نقره جستن الان غلام ها وایستادن که مشعلا رو بردارن بزنن به جون شب ظلمت و داغونش کنن امو زنجیر باف و پالون بزنن وارد میدونش کنن به جایی که شنگولش کنن سکه یه پولش کنن دست همو بچسبن دور یارو برخزن همون مکمور چه داره بشین و پاشو در بیارن قفل و صندوق چه داره بشین و پاشو در بیارن پریا بس دیگه های هایتون گریتون وای وایتون پریا هیچی نگفتن زار و زار گریه میکردن پریا مثل ابرای بهار گریه میکردن پریا پریا یه خط خطی آریون و لخبابتی شبای چله کوچیک که زیر کرسی چیک کوچیک تخمه میشکستیم و بارون میومد صداش تو نافدون میومد بی بی جون قصه میگفت حرفای سربسته میگفت قصه زرد پری سبز پری قصه سنگ سبور بزرگ بون قصه دختر شاه پریون شما این اون پریا اومدین دنیای ما حالا هی هرس میخورین جوش میخورین قصه خاموش میخورین که دنیامون خال خالیه قصه و رنج خالیه دنیای ما قصه نبود پیغوم سربسته نبود دنیای ما عیونه هر کی میخواد بدونه دنیای ما خار داره بیابوناش مار داره هر کی باهاش کار داره دلش خبردار داره دنیای ما بزرگه پر از شغال و گرگه دنیای ما هی 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 عقب آتیش لی 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 آتیش میخوای بالا ترک تا کف پا ترک ترک دنیای ما همینه بخوای نخواهی اینه خب هر یا یه قصه مرغای پرشیکسته آبتون نبود دونتون نبود چای و قلیونتون نبود کی بهتون گفت که بیاین دنیای ما دنیای واویلای ما قله قصتون رو ویل بکنین کارتون رو مشکل بکنین پریا هیچی نگفتن زار و زار گریه میکردن پریا مثل ابرای بهار گریه میکردن پریا دست زدم به شونشون که کنم روونشون پریا جیغ زدن ویغ زدن جادو بودن دود شدن بالا رفتن تار شدن پایین اومدن پود شدن پیر شدن گریه شدن جوون شدن خنده شدن خان شدن بنده شدن خروس سرکنده شدن میوه شدن هسته شدن انار سربسته شدن امید شدن یعص شدن ستاره نحس شدن وقتی دیدن ستاره به من اثر نداره میبینم و هاشا میکنم بازی رو تماشا میکنم حاج و واج و منگ نمیشم از جادو سنگ نمیشم یکیش تنگ شراب شد یکیش دریای آب شد یکیش کوه شد و زق زد تو آسمون توتق زد شراب و سر کشیدم پاشنه رو ور کشیدم زدم به دریا تر شدم از اون ورش به در شدم دویدم و دویدم بالای کوه رسیدم اون بره کو ساز می زدن همپای آواز می زدن دلنگ دلنگ شاد شدیم از ستم آزاد شدیم خورشید خانوم آفتاب کرد کلی برنج تو آب کرد خورشید خانوم بفرمایید از اون بالا بیایم پایین ما ظلم و نفله کردیم آزادی رو قبله کردیم از وقتی خلق با شد زندگی مال ما شد از شادی سیر نمیشیم دیگه از سیر نمیشیم دیگه اسیر نمیشیم ها جستیم و و جستیم تو حوز نقره جستیم سی به طلا رو چیدیم به خونمون رسیدیم به خونمون رسیدیم بالا رفتیم دوغ بود قصه بیبیم دروغ بود پایین اومدیم راست بود پایین اومدیم ماست بود قصه ما راست بود قصه ما به سر رسید قلاقه به خونش نرسید آچین و واچین زنجیر و برچین
I'm not going to follow that. I'm just going to hide behind the translator's cloak. Um, this is, I can say, the most difficult thing I've translated in a number of years, probably up in the top five. Um, only mainly because it's, as you know, so there's so many references to things that are virtually untranslatable, references to nursery rhymes and to, to all sorts of things that just wrestle them to the ground and they won't translate. But here I, here I go. I've called it something else, actually, um, because he called it fairies, Paddy R. I've called it Away with the Fairies uh, by Alan Williams. Uh, <laughs> Uh, because uh, there is one verse in which he says, Parioke konam ravuna shun, ravuna shun. So uh, he's sending them away. Pariya. Once upon a time, or then again not, under the blue vault of heaven, three fairies sat, naked and bare as the sun went down. The fairies were weeping in floods of tears, like a cloud in the spring. The fairies were weeping, their tresses as long as a jet black bow, even longer than a bow, even blacker than the night. On the horizon before them, the city of captive slaves, behind them, cold and black, the legendary castle. From the horizons, the sound of the clanking of chains could be heard. From behind them, the moaning of someone sleepless from inside the tower. Fairies, are you hungry? Fairies, are you thirsty? Are you tired? Become like the bird with a broken wing. What is this sobbing of yours and your crying, alas and alack? The fairies didn't say a thing. In floods of tears, the fairies were weeping like a cloud in the spring. The fairies were weeping. Darling fairies, what is wrong with you that you're crying on this faraway desert as the sun goes down? Don't you worry it might snow? Don't you worry it might rain? Don't you worry that the wolf might come and eat you up? Don't you worry that the devil will gobble you up? Aren't you frightened, fairies? Won't you come to our city? You can hear the sound of our city. You can hear the sound of their chains. Oh, fairies, see how statuesque I am. See my white steed, my silvery white steed, its mane and its tail honey-colored, my singular steed as swift as the wind, my iron-veined gazelle. Just look at its neck and its shanks. Just look at its nose in the air. Tonight in the city there's a celebration. The devil's house has been brought down. The country people are our guests arriving in the city with a crash and a bang. They're playing the daff and the dombak. They're dancing and making us dance. They're scattering laughing rosebuds. They're giving out fruits of the desert. They're laughing ha-ha. They're singing ho-ho. The city belongs to us. It's the party of the people. The devil's complaining. The world belongs to us. The devil's complaining. Whiteness is our king. The devil's complaining. Blackness is shamefaced. The devil's complaining. Oh, fairies. Now the height of the day is past, the doors of the castle are closed. If you get up early, you can ride my horse. We can get to the city of the people. You can see, you can hear the rattle of the chains as they fall off. Yes, the heavy chains, ring on ring, link on link, are falling from their hands and from their feet. They are clapped out, they break into bits. The devil's feeling desperate. They head off to the jungle, they see the forest like a thorn thicket. They head for the desert, they see wasteland and salt flats. Instead, in our city. Ah, you have no idea, fairies. The tower door is open. The slave owners are in disgrace. The servants are freed. The ruins are repaired. All who are in sorrow, they put their sorrow down. Straw mats turn into carpets. The prisoners are set free. The prisoners want revenge. They take up their sickles, become a flood. Whoosh! Become a fire. Roar! In the heart of the night, which is ugly, the fireworks are so beautiful. The fire, the fire, how splendid. Now again the sun's going down, the night is upon us, burning fevers upon us. They leapt and they jumped in the silvery pool. Now the servants are getting up, pick up to pick up the torches. They strike at the night soul, smashing up its darkness. They're putting the saddlebag on Uncle Jan Zangir's buff. Um, they're putting the saddlebags on Uncle Zangir buff, bringing him to the square where they're making him tipsy. They really cut him down to size. They hold each other's hands. They dance around the fellow. They go. There's ants in the bath, sit down, get up. They go with a lock and a chest, sit down, get up. Fairies, now stop all your moaning, your crying, your wailing. The fairies didn't say a thing in floods of tears. The fairies were weeping like a cloud in the spring. The fairies were weeping. Streaky, stripy fairies, naked, nude, and barefoot, sitting on the night of Yalda. Under the kursi, splitting seeds, patter, patter, rain is coming down. Hear the sound in the rain gutters. Grandma told a story. 
tales of secret things, the story of the green fairy, yellow fairy, story of the stone that was patient, the goat on the roof, the story of the fairy king's daughter. Oh, yes, I remember. You are the fairies. You came to our world. Now you're really fed up, and you're seething with anger, and you're choking back your sorrow, for our world is full of holes and nothing but sorrow. Our world wasn't just a story. It wasn't a hidden message. Our world is public knowledge. Whoever wants can know. Our world has thorns. Its desert have snakes in them. Whoever's got anything to do with it, his heart is well aware of it. Our world is very great, crawling with jackals and wolves. Our world, hallelujah, behind the fire, hop, hop, hop. If you want the fire higher, up to your ankles, crackle, crackle. Our world's like this. Like it or not, this is it. Well, dear fairies of the story, broken-winged birds, didn't you have water? Didn't you have berries? Didn't you have tea or a kalyun? Who told you to come to our world, our world of woe, to abandon the castle of your story and make your job so difficult? The fairies didn't say a thing. In floods of tears, the fairies were weeping like a cloud in the spring. The fairies were weeping. I touched their shoulders to set them on their way. The fairies, they screamed and they screamed. They were magic and turned into smoke. They went up and they warped. They came down and they wefted. They aged and they wept, grew young and were laughing, became the masters, then the slaves, became a headless cock, turned into a fruit, became a kernel, became the closed up pomegranate, turned into hope and disappointment and an inauspicious star. When seeing the star, it has no effect on me. I see it, but I am not moved. I see it as playing a game. I don't become mesmerized, fooled, and confused. I'm not turned to stone by the magic. One of them became the chalice of wine, another an ocean of water, another fell down as a mountain and tended itself on the earth. I knocked back the wine, and I pulled up my boots. I dived in the sea, and I got to the other side. I ran, and I ran. I got to the top of the mountain. On the top of the mountain, they were playing, and they sang. Hip, hip, we're ha hip, hooray, we're happy. We're free from the oppression. The sun has put her hat on, and she's put the rice to soak. Lady sun, if you will, please, come down. Come down from on high. We put tyranny to death. We made freedom our ambition. Since the time that the people rose up, Life became ours. We are not sick of happiness. We will not be prisoners anymore. We leapt and we jumped in the silvery pool. We picked up the golden apple and we came home. We went up. It was Doug. Our grandmother's story was false. We came down. It was mast. Our story was true. Our story has come to an end. The crow did never get home. Pick it up and pass it on. Off with the shackles. now for something completely different. And I'll have to find it. Just a few verses to take us back, back in time. This is um, something I published, and you will never have heard this unless you're a very avid fan of my books. This is from the Récé de saint John, and it's the first few from the very beginning, and I'll just plunge you into it. Konun beshno shegefti dos ton ho, ze gofte mobadon o bos ton ho, agad gu yam betapli rash nagonjad, bekorgaz ni ze tahli rash nagonjad. Valiken manazu and dak beju yam, sochan gar sad bovad man yek begu yam. Shenidastam manaz da noy dastur, ke hamvore bechubi bud mashur, hamu zand o avesta khan de bude. As hod ahrema non ra rande bude, ze gofte bastan in dastan goft. Nehani raz ha ye rastan goft. Be yek ruzu be ma in kese gofte, be nikui dore akhbar softe, haman dastur in kese be man goft, be ra niki hamishe bad ham goft. Ze goft dare shekayat baz guyam, ze kare merde behdin raz guyam. در آیامی که شاه گشتاس ببوده اشو زرتشت راه دین نموده به وستا در بگفته حال ها را ستمگر شاه پدید آید شما را سبار دین به باشد شکسته که زو به دین شبد تا راج و خسته همان شاه را ستمگر نام باشد از او دین بهی بی کام باشد زکار دین کنون گویم خبردار چنان 
شد باز بهدین زار و بیزار سکندر شاه شان آمد در آخر کتب ها سوخت او در دین به ظاهر به سی سال سالین دین خار گشته ستم بر, مل بر مردم دین دار گشته پس از وی مدتی دین شاه شد دین پناهی گرفته اردشیرش پادشاهی دگر باره به هی دین دین به هی دین تازه گشته به عالم در نکو آواز گشته به درگاه ایزدی آردای بیراف فرستاده بود به بمین و بحر اوصاف و آن پس هم گنامی نو گجست مرین را را دگر باره شکسته به دین به خلل انداخته باز برآمد هر طرف از دین برا باز پس از مدت که آمد شاه شاپور دگر باره به هی دین کرد پر نور چو ادار آدر, آدر باد مهرس فند دین دار ز بحر دین کمر بسته در این کار ز جنس هفت گونه رای آمیخ همه با داخت چون بر تنش ریخت ز به دینان همین مشکل گشادش همین دین را دگر را زیب دادش هم از شاپور شا تا یزدگر شاه رسید دین به را زینت و جا سر آمد روز زرتشت از زمانه نجست کس ز به دینه نشانه چو از زرتشت سال آمد هزاره ز دین به همی آمد کناره چو از شاه یزدگر شاهی برفته که جد دین آمد و تختش گرفته از آن مدت مدت شکست گشت ایران در ایگان ملک دین افتاد و ایران به دانگاهی شده هر کس پراکند هران کو داشت دل بر زند و پازند چو به دینان و دستوران سراسر ز کار دین نهان گشتند یک سر و قام و جای و باغ و کاخ و ایوان همه بگذاشتند از بحر دین شان The rest is history I will read uh, my translation Now listen to the tales of wondrous things told from the law of pri priests and ancient sages I tell it, but it's not contained in telling, and writing cannot limit it to paper. But I would seek to tell a little portion. Without a hundred words, I'd say just one. I came to hear it from a wise Dastur, whose goodness made him famous for all time. And he had read the Zand and the Avesta. He'd rid himself of Ahriman's dark forces. He told this tale just as the ancients told it. He spoke the hidden mysteries of the righteous. One day it was he told this story to us, strung beautifully the pearls of past events. For that Dastur who told this story to me, may goodness be his ever-present friend. I shall relate, relate the story in his words. I'll tell the secret deeds of Zoroastrians. In King Vishtaspa's days, religion's path was brought to light by holy Zarathustra. He told of things to come in the Avesta. Oppressive kings will show themselves to you. Three times the good religion will be broken. Each time the faithful will be crushed and wounded. The name of these three kings will be oppressor. And hence the noble faith become despairing. I speak now of religion's work, so listen how once again the noble faith was weakened. At length, King Alexander came upon them. He burnt religion's holy books in public. 300 years, this faith was brought down low, and tyranny oppressed its faithful people. Then after, for a while, the faith found refuge when Ardashir took sovereignty over it. And once again, the noble faith could flourish. It came to be illustrious in the world. Ardabirov was posted to God's court in order to describe the world of spirit. And after that, the accursed evil spirit wrought his destruction on this way again. Again, he cast the noble faith to ruin. The faith came into evil repute, ill repute all round. A time passed when Shapur came to the throne. He made the good faith full of light again. When Adubad de Maharaspan, the faithful, resigned himself like this for the religion, the seven brazen substances were mixed, all molten as they flowed upon his body. He solved the problems of the Zoroastrians. He gave this faith its dignity again. And from King Shapur until Yazdegerd, the noble faith was honored and respected. By fate, the days of Zarathustra ended. No one could even trace the noble path. When Zarathustra's thousandth year had come, the limit of the noble faith came too. When kingship went from Yazdegerd the king, the infidels arrived and took his throne. From that time forth, Iran was smashed to pieces. Alas, that land of faith now gone to ruin. And at that time, all those who fixed their hearts upon the Zand and Parzan scattered. When every layman and Dastur at once went into hiding for religion's sake, left homes, lands, gardens, villas, palaces, they left all for the sake of their religion. Uh, last Christmas, um, Ida and I 
uh, sent out a New Year's card. That is the, the Miladi, the Western New Year card. And it was a, a passage, it was probably the most learned uh, Christmas card or New Year's card anyone's ever received because it had footnotes in it. <laughs> uh, and it was a passage from the, um, it was a passage from the, the second book of the Masnavi, which I translated. Um, a, a very beautiful passage um, from um, the Masnavi, uh, which tells of the meeting of Mary's mother and, sorry, of Jesus' mother Mary and John the Baptist's mother um, and uh, Elizabeth. Uh, and this is recorded in, although she, Elizabeth's not named in Surah 19 of the Quran, but it's also, of course, famously a, a passage that Rumi presumably had actually read because he knew the New Testament well. Uh, Luke, in, in I think the second chapter of Luke, and I've just written an article about it, which is published in the Molana Rumi Review, so out of New, New Year's cards come articles. Uh, now, this passage is quite brief. It goes like this. Modar Yahya be Maryam Darnahoft, Pishtar as Baze Hamle Hish Goft, Diapin Didam Darune To Shahist, Ke Ku Olul Asmo. I've got to get the meter right after reading that. Kaseya San John, just excuse me. File out on file out on file on file out on file out on file on, right. Okay. Modar Yahya be Maryam Darnahoft. پیشتر از پیشتر از باز حمله خیش گفت که یقین دیدم درون تو شهیست کو علول از مرسول آگاهیست چون برابر افتادم با تو من کرد سجد حمله من ای زلفتان زلفتان این جنین مر آن جنین را سجد کرد که از سجودش در تنم افتاد درد گفت مریم من درون خیش هم سجده ای دیدم از این طفل شکم. ابلهان گویند که این افسانه را خط بکش زیرا دروغ است و خطا. زان که مریم وقت وز حمل خیش بود از بیگان دور و همز خیش از برون شهر آن, شهر آن شیرین پسون تا نشد فارق نیامد خود درون. مریم در حمل جفت کس نشد از برون شهر او و پس نشد چون به زادش آنگهانش بر کنار برگرفت و برد تا پیش و تبار مادر یک یا کجا دیدش که تا گوید او را این سخن در ماجرا این نداند کان که اهل خاطر است قایب اف آفاق او را حاضر است پیش مریم حاضر آید در نظر مادر یحیا که دور است از بسر دیده ها بسته ببیند دوست را چون مشبک کرده باشد پوشت پوست را بر ندیدش نز برون نز اندرون از حکایت گیر معنی ای زبون نی چنان کفسانه ها بشنیده بود همچوشین بر نقش آن چسبیده بود تا همی گفت آن کلیل ای بی زبان چون سخن نوشد زدم نگی بی بیان بر به دانستند لحن هم دیگر فهم آن چون کرد بی ناقی بشر در میان شیر و گاو آن دم نچون شد رسول و خاند بر هر دو فسون چون وزیر شیر شد گاوه نبیل چون ز عکس ماه ترسان گشت پیل این کلیل او دمن جمله افتراست در نکه بازاب لک لک دامه راست ای برادر قصه چون پیمانه ایست معنی اندر وی مثال دانه ایست دانه معنی بگیرد مده اقل ننگرد پیمان را گرگشت نف ماجرای بل بل و گل گوش دار گرچه گفتی نیست آنجا آشکار The Baptist's mother secretly told Mary before she was delivered of her burden for certain I can see a king within you a lord of resolution wise apostle 
Because when I, whenever I encounter you, my baby bows to him, illustrious lady. My fetus bowed in worship to your fetus. From bowing thus, my body was in pain. Mary replied, I also felt within me this baby's act of worship in my womb. And then Molana says, Eshkola Vardan Barin Fese, raising a difficulty with this story. Now, fools claim that this tale should be curtailed and that it is a falsehood and mistaken that Mary, in the course of her confinement, was far away from family and strangers till she gave birth. That maid of sweet enchantment remained outside the town and didn't enter. That in her pregnancy she met nobody. She did not come back in from out of town, that she gave birth and held him to her bosom and took him to present, present him to her king. So where had John the Baptist's mother seen her to render this account of what had happened? Javob Eshkal, answer to this difficulty. They don't know that for people of good heart, for them, what's hidden to this world is present. The mother of the Baptist came to Mary as present to her view, though far from sight. Closed eyes are capable of seeing the friend when one has made the eyelids like a network. Though she may not have seen her, in or outside, just grasp the story's meaning, simpleton. Not like the man who'd heard some mythic tales and had got stuck in some myth understanding. He'd say, how could that tongue-tied beast Kalila take in the words that came from speechless Demne? And if they understood each other's babbling, how could a human understand such nonsense? How could the Demne act as messenger of lion and ox and charm them both with stories? How was the noble ox the lion's vizier? How come the elephant feared the moon's reflection? This tale Khalil, Khalil and Demne's all invention. Oh, why is a stork debating with a crow? Oh, brother, stories like a pair of scales. The meaning's like the grain that's in the balance. A clever man will take the grain of meaning. He will not see the scales like they're not there. Hear what the rose and nightingale are saying, though there's no real speech between them playing. Well, I've been on for 20, 25. I'll do one more. I uh, won't read the Persian of this one because uh, it's too painful for you, I think. So I will read the English. Um, it comes from the fourth book of the Masnavi. It is not very long, but it's one of the, I think, well, it, it, Nicholson, who translated it uh, last time, uh, said it, he thought it was the most sublime passage in the Masnavi. And uh, I was very moved by it, and I've read it at several people's funerals. So I'll end this evening's performance by <laughs> reading you this sublime passage. It begins, Sal ha mardi ke dar shahri bovad, yek zaman ke chashm dar khabi rabad, shahri digar binad o por niko bad, hich dar yadash na yayad shahri khad. If anybody remembers that passage, those of you who are experts in the Masnavi. And here is my translation. For years, a man may dwell within a city. The moment when his eye goes off to sleep, he sees another, full of good and bad, and nothing of his city is recalled. With thoughts of, I was there, this city's new, this isn't mine, and I'm just a guest. And then, no, he thinks that he has always been here in this very city, born and bred. What wonder if the spirit's own abodes, which were its dwellings and its former births, are now forgotten. For this world, like sleep, enfolds her as the clouds obscure the stars. More so, from all the cities she has trodden, the layers of dust are unswept from her sight. She has not striven ardently in order to purify the heart and see what's happened, to raise her heart out of the pit of mystery and see with open eyes both first and last. At first, one came to inorganic realms, from inorganic to organic life. For years, one lived on in in an organic state, and now forgot the inorganic world. And when one passed from plant to animal, there was no memory of the state of plants, except a feeling which one had for them. It's so strong in springtime with its fragrant flowers, and they, like babies feeling for their mother, knew not the secret of their urge to suckle. Like every novice's obsessiveness towards his noble fear, peer of generous fortune, this finite mind is from that perfect mind, this shadows tremblings from that perfect bow. 
One's shadow passes into him at last, and then one knows the secret of the quest. How can the shadow of another bow be stirred, O blessed man, if this tree does not tremble? Again, the Lord Creator, whom you know, takes us from animal to human nature. And so one went from state to state like this till one became enlightened, wise, and great. There's no recalling prior states of mind. From this one, too, there is advancing onward. So one escapes this mind of greed and gain to see a hundred thousand minds of wonder. If one should fall asleep and lose the past, how could one be abandoned in oblivion? They bring one back to wakefulness from sleep that one may laugh at one's own sleepy state. What was that sorrow suffered in my sleep? And how could I forget the truthful states and could not see the sorrows and those ills result from sleep, deception, fantasy? Thus is this world, which is the sleeper's dream. The sleeper thinks it truly is eternal, till suddenly the dawn of death shall break, and we escape thoughts, darkness, and deceit, and laughter at your sorrows overcomes you to see your true abode and dwelling place. Thank you. Very nice. Yes, we are. We were waiting to be given our marching orders, John. Yes, I was waiting for that. Towards no. Arjunamosh <laughs> Kelgoshar. <laughs> but you have to say nobody is allowed to have any gloss of anything unless they can recite a line of poem, poetry. <laughs> so again. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for putting up with us. And we have to say thank you. Definitely, it's been a wonderful performance, one of my favorites, uh, absolutely. <laughs> Ida, definitely, yes, really uh, mesmerizing.